In Emily Dickinson's poem, a bird came down the walk. The speaker encounters a bird. She sees him first savagely bite a worm in half before eating it, drink dew from a blade of grass, then politely hop to the side to let a beetle pass. The bird's eyes then glance around nervously, and the speaker offers him a crumb. At this point, apparently frightened, the bird takes off, moving smoothly with grace and beauty through the air. In the poem's first three stanzas, the first line has only six syllables instead of the usual eight of Dickinson's typical ballad meter. Only the third lines of the stanzas, except the fourth, have the full eight syllables. The rhyme in the first two stanzas is the typical ABCB pattern of most of her poetry, but the second and fourth lines of the third stanza don't rhyme at all, while the fourth and fifth stanzas feature slant rhyme. This poem provides examples both of Dickinson's love of nature and her clear-eyed, unromantic, sometimes clinical way of presenting it. The bird at first seems cruel and bloody, biting the angleworm in half and eating it raw, which is a perfect example of Dickinson's predilection for reporting accurately what she sees. Although she loves nature, she doesn't romanticize the bird's actions. There's a somewhat comic moment in the fourth stanza, depending on how one reads the first line. If one reads it as the continuation of the thought at the end of the third stanza, then it becomes, he stirred his velvet head like one in danger, cautious. But one might also read the first line of the fourth stanza as beginning a new thought, in which case the speaker seems to suggest she is in danger of the little bird. Like one in danger, cautious, I offered him a crumb. Finally, as the bird takes off, the speaker becomes lyrical in describing his graceful movements. The flapping of his wings is soft, gentle, and subtle, causing as little disturbance to the sky as oars divide the ocean, too smooth and silvery to admit a seam caused by a rowing boat. Further, the bird's movements are as smooth as those of butterflies, which cause no splashes when they swim off the banks of noon, as if noon were a river. Dickinson's comparisons make the bird seem almost otherworldly.